Day five and getting ready for pre-calculus. Now, I loved this problem and I wanted to choose it because a lot of students just struggle with negative numbers. And that's really it. It's really not that difficult of a problem in terms of like order of operations. Um, we do have a new grouping symbol, which is actually going to be our numerator and our denominator. So when we're applying a problem like this, we always want to simplify the numerator and the denominator first before we actually get into trying to divide or multiply these two fractions together. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first top. We have a six plus a negative three. And again, plus a minus, ladies and gentlemen, is the same thing as subtraction, right? So you can think of this as just six minus nine, which is going to be a negative three. Now let's go and take a look at the denominator. Negative three minus nine. I love this one because if you think about it, think of negative as like you owe me money. You owe me $3 and now you're going to borrow nine more dollars. Well now, ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna owe me $12, right? Notice the negative divided by negative is going to be positive, but we'll worry about that in just a second. Over here, I have $24, but now I'm getting, I'm borrowing 72. Now I was working with my daughter on helping her with subtraction and the difference and stuff like that. And in this example, you know, what I would just do is say like, all right, 24 plus what is gonna give me 72? Well, I know 24, right, is going, plus four would give me to 60, and then eight would, um, eight, eight to four would give me 12, and that would take me to my 72. So therefore that's a negative 48, right? Because you are owing 72 from the original 24. And then here I have three minus six, right? You have $3, you borrow six, you now owe me $3. All right, so now we can go ahead and do some division. Over here, this is um, 12 does not evenly divide into three. But what we wanna think about is what is the smallest number that evenly divides in my top and my bottom? That's three, right? So you can divide a three into the top, which would be a one, and three divides into the denominator, four times, so that's going to be a one-fourth. Remember, it's going to be a positive, ladies and gentlemen, um, because the negative over the negative. Over here, actually three does divide into 48, and that's going to be a 16 times. So I can rewrite this as a 16. Now again, fractions mess up with students all the time. So remember, you can always think of an integer as over one. Then if you wanna multiply this straight across, you really have 16 over four, which is just going to equal to four. Now you're ready for day six.